Arrowhead just updated Helldivers 2, which actually nerfs the meta bills for Helldivers 2, as well as adding in the planetary hazards and so much more. So if you want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. The developer stated this is one of the first of many patches coming to Helldivers 2 to help keep the game balanced and so then meta builds don't dominate the game and weaker weapons and weaker builds don't get completely left on the wayside and some changes come to the game as well. So let's go into the major update. The first thing you're going to notice when you jump into the game is that they're going to be planetary hazards. As stated here, saying many planets now have additional environmental challenges that will appear at random while you are deployed from fire tornadoes to meteor showers and many more. I really love the environments of Helldivers 2 and the amount of variety you get in a single mission as well. You can go from night to day clear skies the rain of course when you're taking out a terminated nest you get this cool fog effect on everything it just looks so good so having these environmental factors taking the place will add just an extra layer of just chaos which actually i'm like looking forward to it did you know that almost 62 percent of you people are not subscribed to this channel well you know what to do then and tap like for algorithm reasons and let's get right back into the video major balancing took place for the eradicate missions as they now require more kills and enemies spawn more often the time to complete the mission was previously shorter than intended and should now usually take twice as long to complete. Excellent change right here. I always felt like those missions were really short and kind of just like little filler kind of thing. Not really something you need to really jump in and take place like your normal missions are. Okay, next we're getting into the nitty gritty, the changes and buffs and nerfs to the primary, secondary and support weapons as well as stratagems. First thing we need to talk about is the breaker shotgun as it's basically been breaking the meta of this game and it got some significant Significant nerfs. As the breaker had a decreased magazine capacity from 16 to 13 and increased recoil from 30 to 55. That's a major increase to the recoil and while the magazine capacity decreased does hurt a little bit it's not a huge reduction i'm glad to see that they kept the power of the shotgun because that's what makes the weapon so much fun but yeah like we saw this coming like the breaker was going to get a nerf the hg8 punisher saw increased total ammo capacity from 40 to 60 increased stagger force increased damage from 40 to 45 per bullet i might have to give this one a go because having stagger as an ability against enemies especially against those larger ones like a charger is absolutely huge to see how well this weapon plays out moving forward because i don't really see anybody using the punisher the breaker spray and prey saw increased armor penetration increased fire rate from 300 to 330 increased pellets from 12 to 16 per shot and decreased mag size from 32 to 26. Another meta weapon saw some significant changes and that is the railgun. I recently unlocked this. It's been a lot of fun to play around with. You're super useful against those chargers for sure. And what Arrowhead did with the railgun is that they decreased armor penetration in safe mode and decreased damage against durable enemy parts. Most likely meaning if you're using unsafe mode in the railgun, which you should be using for extra damage, it'll likely take a, maybe an extra shot or two. We'll definitely have to test it out. But yeah, the railgun gun was again another very obvious choice for your support weapon but this next buff actually might make this support weapon a meta type build being the flamethrower so I'd increase damage per second by 50 percent i will definitely need to test out the flamethrower because that is a huge buff and plus it just looks cool the laser cannon also received some changes saying that increased damage against durable enemy parts increased armor penetration and improved ergonomics laser cannon definitely needed a buff i definitely I felt like it was an underpower weapon but it did look really cool and it was fun to play around with but yeah laser cannon i think it needed some love we saw three stratagems receive some changes with this update as well specifically one being the shield generator pack where it increased delay before recharging the orbital 120 millimeter he barrage had increased duration of the bombardment and decreased spread and the same treatment was given to the 380mm HE barrage. I would have liked to see some other stratagems get some buffs, especially with like that eagle strike that we have with that recent challenge, because that was feeling really weak. Like, I think there is a, probably a decent balance between how fast you can call something in and compared to the amount of damage you can deal to the enemy. The shield generator pack also receives a nerve saying that increased delay before recharging. But yeah, that shield generator pack definitely needed a nerf as that was basically another meta build where like if you're running the higher end stuff, 
kind of needed to run that. Next, we're going into other fixes and one of the biggest issues that's been in Helldivers 2 since the launch of the game that's affected your gameplay directly and that is armor. Well, things have changed now saying fixed armor rating value is not reducing damage as intended. So now your heavy armor will actually act like heavy armor and your light armor well, I should act like light armor. And so then whenever you hear anybody say all armor acts the same, you can say, well, not so much anymore. You also improved the flashlight efficiency, which is great because I tried it out in, on darker maps and like it was kind of a cool visual effect, but I didn't really find it that beneficial. Talking about the darkness on some maps, I did say that some maps were a little too dark as intended. And so then those have been brightened up a little bit for a little bit better visual quality. Fix the timing issues that could occur in the Extract E710 primary objective they changed the button interaction behavior for buttons in a bunker point of interest hell divers now let go of the button after holding it for a few seconds i will admit when i first started playing i pressed that button i was like wait how come i'm not letting go how do i let go i need to let go this next change i think is going to be great for some just content and just funny moments saying hell divers standing next to the icbms during launch will get properly toasty with a chance of not so spontaneous combustion makes sense as those missiles are just awesome to watch and pack up huge payload. Your camera no longer is locked on the player's own corpse and blocking spectator mode. And some more environmental damage fun with maybe a little bit of trolling or griefing involved with this one saying Helldivers now take damage from fire, gas, and etc. generated by other players. Which you're probably thinking, great, more ways to die in Helldivers. But I mean, this also would make sense, right? For how much like friendly fire is very much a thing within the game. You would think things like fire and gas and other things like that would actually damage damage other players as well. Next, I talk about known issues, which are things within the game that they are aware of that need to be fixed. So if you see someone in the comments talking about, oh, they need to fix this, that means they didn't watch the full video like you should have been doing. I highlighted four main issues. There are more, but a lot of them were kind of mundane. Some of them are more gameplay focused, like this one saying picking up items from bunkers and caches in quick succession may render one of the items unpickable. So when you're looting up, make sure you just give it a little bit of time. The text chat box display is obstructed by the cinematic letter boxing during extraction. You might just see that text box be pushed up just a little higher so it doesn't get obstructed. I've had this one happen as well where players may become disconnected during gameplay. It's rare, but it does happen, so at least they know what's going on with that. And some games may not be joinable by others for a short period of time. I wonder if this is talking about the issue where you try to join players' matches are on the map, but then it says you either can't connect or sometimes it says the lobby is full. So hopefully this will smooth out that process a little bit, because a lot of times it's just kind of like playing slots. Like eventually I'm going to join somebody's mission because yeah, like quick playing is nice and joining, you know, having randoms join you is also kind of fun, you know, be able to play with a larger squad. But you want to make sure people are like at the proper levels when you're playing at more challenging difficulties. Like when I'm playing on extreme and I have a level eight or nine join my lobby, I'm like, mm, I don't know, you should be here. And I'm sure many of you watching are probably like, oh man, why did they change my favorite thing within the game, the ruined Hell Divers 2? Well, the designer Alex K actually hit up online to provide a few words on their approach to balancing within Hell Divers 2. For the TLDR, Alex K mentions that they want to make sure that there's a good amount of variety in weapon choices. And build choices within the game and you don't want to have a meta build you don't want to have like such an insanely strong meta build that will make other options obsolete which is kind of at the point right now within the game he brings up the example of the aca auto cannon as a good example of a well-balanced weapon it packs a powerful punch has very good range but requires you to carry an ammo pack or a friend to assist you the grenade launcher is the opposite example it's a good general purpose weapon that gives you so much flexibility, it obviously can't deal too much damage without becoming overpowered. And he stated that after analyzing the data and feedback from the community, there were three main offenders, and that was the Breaker, Railgun, and Shield Generator Pack, which I would absolutely agree with that. As all of these have huge upsides and minimal downsides. This next part I do really enjoy as it's a personal note from the developer about nerfs and buffs and things like that saying, I know having your favorite toy nerfed absolutely sucks. Investing countless hours into mastering a weapon is an incredible dedication from you, which is the main reason we're making this game in the first place. And then having that weapon weakened feels like a punishment for being too good at the game. But I implore you not to compare a changed item with its older version, 
but to evaluate the existing one as it is and see if it still has a place in your heart. The main thing to walk away from this is that I'm glad to see that Arrowhead is going for ways to maybe bring down some of the more popular things, but also buff up some of the least popular things within the game to have a more balanced variety when it comes to like the meta build, because there's always going to be a meta build within Helldivers if you're trying to min-max your experience. But I would definitely say there are some weapons that are clearly better than others, and that just shouldn't be the case in a game like this. I think all the changes that they made within this update are warranted and very needed. I'm definitely looking forward to those planetary hazards to see how that plays out. And I'm very curious how the railgun is going to play because I just unlocked it. I had a lot of fun with it and I really hope it's still effective against, say, chargers, for example. But thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy these type of videos. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.